Hello and welcome to the next episode of the ship design series. In this episode we'll be going over basic military ship design mechanics and what uh, you need to make a military ship, as well as various other things around them. Uh, you can find uh, where I talk about ship uh, weapons, uh, specifically in the ship design philosophy 101 video. But in this video I'm just going to talk about basic things that you need to be thinking about mechanically um, and a few other little tips and bits there. So let's get right into it. So something important to know about a military vessel um, is that all military vessels will use maintenance supplies. They will use much more fuel on average than commercial vessels. Uh, they also have deployment times. So maintenance life, how it works, is that based on the amount of maintenance supplies and the amount of engineering spaces you have, your maintenance life is increased accordingly. Each component adds the amount of... Um, decreases the maintenance life accordingly. So a big engine is going to decrease it a lot compared to just a small point defense gun. One thing you want to be looking for is always having enough MSP to be able to repair the max repair component. So if we have a look at this figure, here, I have enough MSP to repair the uh, biggest component if it gets damaged in terms of MSP. So that's an important part about building uh, military ships. Another part is average uh, yearly failure rate, which is this. So if for this ship, every year, um, it will fail about 1.5 times, right? Um, a component will fail 1.5 times. And that gives it a maintenance life of 1.5 years uh, based on the amount of MSP I have and also um, how long it will last. If you run out of MSP, if you run out of maintenance, you will the ship can blow up, you'll lose components, there'll be issues. Deployment time. Deployment time, essentially, uh, buff, as you increase it, it buffs out crew quarters, living spaces, life support, essentially, um, for extended journeys uh, into space. Uh, if you are outside of your deployment time while doing things, it is going to mean that you are not able to, you're going to lose morale, and that's going to cause problems with the fire rate, um, it's going to cause them to be less efficient in pretty much everything, um, and eventually it will it will severely affect your military vessel in almost all ways. So you need to plan out your deployment times on where you, how long your fleet's going to be deploying. I let's go for 12 months for most vessels, but you can go 18, 24, 36, etc. The next part is armor. Now, for commercial ships, we don't want to go over armor because armor wasn't really that important in terms of uh, protecting commercial vessels. So, armor, how armor works is we're going to quickly uh, just go over it. So, armor basically stops um, weapons from causing internal damage. So, instead of a, a weapon hitting your ship and causing internal damage within the ship, it will instead deflect uh a certain amount of the damage and cause only a small amount to get through or none at all so if we go into our ship organization here and i grab this you have a look at the armor set so i have four layers of armor here on this ship um and and this is how it's arranged so you'll see a damage that will go through here damage go through here and these will turn red accordingly so the best way to, to, to think about it is the more armor you have, the less chance that they're going to be able to penetrate and do damage internally. Because as soon as they are able to get one line through this, uh, or lines through this, they're able to start penetrating it. And so they will start damaging these components here. Accordingly, and it will show up here. The ship will be red, and so on and so forth. Okay, next. Uh, military vessels um, require a few things. Uh, so you cannot have an engine. You can have an engine basically any size, uh, but it can't be below 0 0.5 accessibility if it's above 25 size or 0 0.5 uh, fuel modifier or power modifier. You can't have anything above 25 of that size be uh, below 0 0.5 power modifier or 0 0.5 power modifier. Um, the second thing 
is uh, in terms of basic mechanics and 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 other stuff like that. Um, for missiles, you're going to need magazines to put the missiles in. This is the ordnance tab. You can add whatever kind of ordnance you want. So for me, I added M5 Valiant. This is a missile, and that uses the ship's magazine, which is um, right here. That's the magazine. So this allows you to preload and load things. An important part of this is you need to set up beforehand what your ship is going to carry in its magazine. Um, otherwise, when you tell it to resupply or load ordnance, it will not load any ordnance if it does not have a, a basis of say, okay, what am I loading? If it doesn't know what it's loading, well, that's going to have issues. Uh, the next, this is for hangars, so this is um, ships that are 1,000 tons and below that you can load within the hangar itself um, as something to think about. I would go with that. I'm going to go with fighter design in, in a separate video and, and fact design as well. Um, a big tip here with military design is you can put a prefix here and put a naming theme, and then you can select random name, and every time you build a ship, it will name it accordingly. Massive tip for that. And over here, you can instant build ships and the like. So now I'm going to go over um, a few weapon systems and, and other things that I like to talk about. So um, in, in terms of point defense systems and turrets, turrets can track faster than your beam fire control can go if you increase it enough. So you could have 32,000 uh, km per second tracking, but you'll only be able, your beam fire control only have 16,000. Um, tracking speed basically allows you to utilize the full hit percent of that weapon against the uh, target's tracking. If it does not mean uh, that you can't hit the target, it just means that it will, uh, if you're faster than them in terms of tracking speed, then you'll hit, you'll have a bonus to hitting the target. If you're slower, you'll have a negative to hitting the target. Um, and if you're the same, you'll have your normal chance to hit the target. So, you always want to match your beam fire control and your point defense uh, turrets correctly. Now, turrets can go beyond ship speed. Now, ship speed is determined by your engine speed and your tons and, and all of that. Now, if your ship speed is 4,000 kilometers a second, and you have a hull mounted energy weapon, that hull mounted energy weapon can only go, can only track targets at the same speed as your ship is flying, you know, traversing space. So, if it's hull mounted, it's usually a lot worse uh, than turrets in terms of point defense because missiles will go tens of thousands of kilometers a second. And at this tech, you can't make a ship that goes tens of thousands of kilometers a second. So, you can't create have hull mounted point defense that efficiently. Um, now, there are some ways to counteract that by just volume of fire with rail guns and other things, but that's just something to consider. The second thing, uh, or oh, the next thing we're going to talk about is sensors. Sensors are very, very important. Your point defense sensors or your point defense needs sensors um, and to be, able, to be able to properly lock on to targets. Um, so you need a resolution one sensor that can detect uh, the enemy at the range, at the very minimum of your point defense. Um, you can always have a little bit more than that because ECM can affect your systems, so having a little bit more is always useful. Um, and you also need a wider range sensor, that's a resolution up, and that allow you to detect other ships uh, more effectively. You can use a thermal EM sensor to lock on with a weapon or gain an active sensor lock. Um, and you need a fire control for both to be able to target. For beam fire controls, they can either target four salvos of missiles or one ship. So one fire control per one ship or four salvos. Same with missiles. So one ship or four salvos of missile or four salvos of enemy missiles. Okay. Okay, uh, and we're gonna move on uh, to the next uh, thing that we're gonna talk about, which is going to be. Um, which is going to be uh, tool design and also um, how how certain things work in terms of command and control and stuff like that. So I've kind of gone over command and control in general, but these consider them very, very useful. Um, a few things I will go over, though, is just how um, 
everything combines together. So I'm not going to talk about per se what you should be building in terms of things, as that's more design philosophy, and I will be going over that in further videos. But in this video, I will be going over primarily, um, which I'm about to go into now, is what you should be looking for. What's good at counseling? What what's basic mechanics? Just basic things. So turret very good at dealing uh, in point defense. Um, non non turreted weapons are mainly for ship uh, engagements. Missiles great for long range, high burst damage. Uh, uh, AMMs or anti missile missiles very good at longer range point defense past a certain point. Um, and also, uh, uh, another thing is to always consider with military vessels, um, their intended purpose. So go back to the methodology of the, what is their intended purpose, what they're trying to do, um, and, and various other things. One thing I will also talk about is, uh, protection value. So each ship has a protection value that it provides to the system. Um, so for... This ship, it provides 65.48 protection value per ship in the system to any planet that requires it. Now, this is very useful in dealing with unrest and making sure that people are happy because they want military protection. Planets require a military protection once they reach a certain point. So, this PPV is based on the weapons you have, not anything else. So, if you have... Uh, a twin point defense counter right here, it will provide X amount of PPV. I think we can actually see that for one second. Um, one thing we can here. Um, there's somewhere that you can see it. But each weapon system essentially uh, gives a certain amount of PPV. Um, and that PPV is very, very useful uh, in terms of. Uh, basically stopping riots, making sure people are doing what they need, so consider that as well. I'm now going to uh, go over just basic, like, glossary stuff, so, um, stuff that's in here, so, hits to kill, 61, how many hits does will it, will it need to sustain before it is destroyed? Uh, sensors, so this indicates thermal and um, geological sensors and gravitational sensors. Um, DCR, I do not believe. Uh, damage control, oh yes, damage control rating. PPV, uh, then maintenance life, maintenance supplies, uh, average fa yearly failure rate. Um, IFR, which is... Uh, <laughs> I do not recall what these are i apologize i have not done my research probably but uh yeah so i those are the general terms um and then your magazine your your troop transport capacity you have your commander and then your abbreviations for this um and then you have deployment time appropriately um so there we go uh that is the basic ship uh design uh, mechanics around military vessels um, I probably missed a few things, haven't said some things properly, there will be follow-up videos to this, um, and we'll also be going over more ship design philosophy in the future. I hope you did enjoy, and we'll meet you back next time. Please like and subscribe, as it does help get the word out and get more people watching these tutorials, so I have to answer less questions on the Discord. <laughs> um, and it also, um, no, every support, uh, every piece of support is very, very useful, um, and it makes me try forward to get more videos out and more things. If you want to uh, suggest an idea, please do so in the uh, link below in the description, where I'll be linking to your Google spreadsheet where you can put your idea in. And yeah, I hope you did enjoy. I'll see you next time. Hey guys, just something really quick after the fact that I just want to go over. Um, this is recorded after the first portion you'll see. Um, just a big PSA, uh, all geological survey components are military, they were supposed to be in VB6 but it was overlooked, and gravitational survey components are as well, so both are considered military components, please do understand that, thank you, um, I'll see you next time.